It's Arden and Christian here, and we're so excited because today we are actually sharing about dating, do's, and donuts. Uh, I love and donuts, donuts, and donuts are amazing. So why don't you tell us your favorite kind of donut, Christian, before we get started? Any kind of donut. Um, I like chocolate donuts. Preferably as much chocolate as you can, like chocolate with a chocolate glaze. She loves blueberry, too. I, it's a I big do. One. I love blueberry. Well, See, the thing you should get in dating is by the end of it, you should know what kind of donuts they donut. like. Donut. See, fun fact is actually on our first date, I brought Christian a donut. And then two. Two donuts, yes. I remember, it was two yep. donuts. I picked her up, and it was the very first time I met her, and I brought her a donut, and that's when she knew that I was her husband. So yeah. that's how you do the first do, is you bring someone a donut. But no, <laughs> just kidding, we're actually talking about do's and don'ts. You know, we're definitely not experts, but we have some little things that we felt like as we went through the yeah. process. So we actually, um, I met Christian, uh, I'd say through a mutual friend. Uh, that mutual friend was uh, Instagram. <laughs> And uh, we got connected through there and I told her I was very upfront, you know, I sent her a message and I said, you know, hey, I'd love to take you out and I actually got her number. I told her I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, not gonna text you, I'm not gonna continue to keep messaging you, I'll only call you from here to the point of our date so that you know it's not like this, we're building up this artificial relationship in the beginning over direct messages or text messages. And then uh, we went on our first date, and it ended up being like an eight hour date. And then we ended up only dating for about three months, and got engaged, and then we were got married. Married, married yeah. like four, was what was step. it, five months later? Four and a half, yeah. Four and a half months later. And so we went through that process very fast. And the reason why is because we did a lot of things, um, honestly, very intentional. And so I'll say as a disclaimer, um, I think a lot of people think, I don't know how to date, so I'm going to be awful at it. I've always been awful at it. That's just how it is. Um, I don't think I did dating perfectly. I don't know, neither one of us did, but I think kind of the revelation you had in dating and kind of leading us into that really built the foundation that we have. Yeah. And it allowed us to speed past a lot of the things that take time and kind of eliminate a lot of the things that lengthen a dating period where you have all these questions and this miscommunication yeah. so yeah with on so within the first I mean one of the first phone calls after we went on a date I kind of called her and I told her hey this is my intentions I said I am I'm wanting to continue to keep going on dates with the full intent uh, to marriage and I said and I you know I didn't want to make it seem like this big massive thing but I I was like you know Things could change, obviously. I said, we're still getting to know each other, but this is my intention. I'm not dating you just to date you. Mm -hmm. I'm dating you with there being an end goal mm -hmm. in mind. Yeah, and not with the pretense of, okay, I'm dating you. Like, there is this pressure to get married, but it was like, okay, we're either going to get to know each other and become good friends out of this, yeah. or we're going to get married. There's not going to be the dating for 10 years and we're an item, there's not gonna be the back and forth and it's a nasty breakup at the end. It's this process of getting to know someone, which is really what dating is all about, yeah. is finding out, um, going on dates to get to know someone, not to get the butterflies, not to sweep someone off their feet. Um, I mean, I was a little soft off my feet. Of course, I was with them, I mean, how can I not be? But it was really intentional of yeah. getting to know each other and I think if we would've, um, not continue to keep dating, we would still be friends today. Yeah, yeah, very I'm much so. Well, because we did it well. You know, there was, there was times, I think, um, you know, for guys, oftentimes when you're not feeling, and Christian, you can speak to this, but when you're not feeling like, if I did go on a date, I was very intentional. If I had ever taken a girl out on a date, even if it was something as simple as coffee, that I'd always have a follow-up phone call. That there would be a phone call where I'm not just gonna be like, yeah, we went on a date, and then I'm just gonna ghost that person for the next like six months, and then maybe we'll reconnect as friends. No, I would always have a very intentional follow-up phone call and be like, hey, honestly, this is where my, this is where my thoughts are, this is um, kind of where I'm at. I don't see this, you know, I, I love just getting to know you a little bit better, and I'd always take that awkward conversation, force myself yeah. to have the awkward conversation, so it didn't leave this open end mm -hmm. um, and so let me ask you this Christian because a lot of people have like these checklists and uh, you know hey their hair has to be this color they got to be this height all this stuff what would you say um, would be a, a do and a don't around that hmm. so I think there is importance of a checklist but sometimes we keep it at a superficial level so there is I think I know at least for me um, in the months before I met Arden those were a few months that I was really intentional of figuring out what God had for me, figuring out what was important in that checklist and what was kind of superficial. I mean, 
Tall, dark, and handsome, and athletic was on my list, but that's not the things that I was actually searching for when it came to the time that I met Arden, but a spiritual leader, someone that um, would communicate with me, someone that would honor me, someone that would um, honor me in all senses of like purity, my time, and I think that's so great what you said of that gentlemanness mm -hmm. of not making a girl wonder, or even a guy wonder on the opposite side, because yeah. dating should be very clear. Um, I think today we kind of idolize the chase or playing hard to get, but that yeah. is so um, a complete opposite of what dating is actually supposed to be. But for me, back to the checklist, um, I knew whenever we were on our first date that there were things I was just getting to know you with, but the whole time I was thinking, okay, is he going to be someone that I would look for yeah. as a husband one day? And if not, there's no time, there's no point in wasting my time. Yeah, she like grilled me. We had a follow-up <laughs> phone call after our first date the next night, and she grilled me with all these questions, like hard-ass hard questions that hard were... Ask yeah, questions. ask. Yeah, ask ask questions that were very telling in that situation. So she was doing exactly that. Yeah. And I think I had been at a point of dating where um, I had kind of beaten around some things and honestly confused myself and others just in the process. So when I got to that point, I told God, I was like, I'm not going, I'm not going to actually date someone until it's my husband. So I knew in that point, I didn't want to waste any time. So for my own sake, own sake of where my heart lied or even my time, because I didn't want to waste time anymore, so yeah. I knew I had to ask those questions and see what I was getting into because mm -hmm. honestly, why would you not go into a relationship or a situation knowing what you're getting into? This idea of having fun, just seeing where it's going, keeping it casual, um, I think dating should be way more than that. It should be way more purposeful so that you can enter into the courtship season well. I think in the church world, we make such a big de deal of dating. Like, you know, if someone finds out you went on a date with someone, it's like, oh, when's the, when's the wedding happen? And so I think for us is we have to, you know, a big shift in my mind was, okay, I need to be intentional but casual about dating. So that I was going to be extremely intentional to look for the right person, but I was not going to go on a date and make it this grand, massive thing that would instantly make that other person fall in love with me. Um, and so I'd be casual in that manner so that I would make sure I would leave room for myself to be able to get to know the person on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, so that then I would know for sure if I wanted this to transition into courtship. And so um, with courtship, I think, you know, what we did from the very beginning, as I said, is I made sure there was always an end, end goal. And courtship is never something that is supposed to be stationary. It's not mm -hmm. supposed to be, uh, you know, you enter into courtship and then four years later, you're still trying to figure out what's going on. Courtship is, hey, we are going to move from A to Z and mm -hmm. we're going to have the necessary conversations to in order to do that. And so we talked right away, you know, we talked about family. Um, what it was, we talked about family. We talked about, um, just location, calling, location. Yeah. calling. Um, and what else we talked about? Like just, about last time. yeah, just dreams. I mean, I continue to keep pressuring her on what do you, what has God placed inside of you? I remember, I think that was like a three phone call conversation where it just kept trying to draw it out. And so we had these conversations and we actually went through this book together. Um, called Single, Dating, Engaged, Married. Mm -hmm. And it was an amazing book because we walked through each step as we went through those steps together. And so we walked through, you know, we both were kind of read through the single period and then we um, walked through the dating period as we read that book together. Um, we'd read about a chapter of it, I think it was. We'd read a chapter every single week and then we'd have a phone call and we'd ask each other these questions that were within that book that would help us identify, really it was like accelerating the process, yeah. help us identify, hey, this is where this person is and this is where he is mm -hmm. at, um, and make sure that we're on the same page. And so that's what made it so it was such a quick process. And we're not saying that, you know, when you go into dating, that has to be a quick process. We know that everyone is different. Some people, they might date, you know, they might date for three years. That's, yeah. that's amazing. But for us, that was what we ended up doing. And it was such a good process. And I would encourage you, even if you do date for three years, that just making sure it's always that courtship, that it is yeah. always moving from A to Z, that throughout it, there's not the unknowns, as you mm -hmm. talked about. There's a a clear expectation and maybe there's something like there might be school or or something that is prohibiting you from getting married at the time but mm -hmm. throughout that all you keep um, cre communication very clear and make sure that you guys are on the same um, the same page when you get into the courtship season which because I think courtship dips into the tail end of kind of dating and into the beginning of engagement yeah um, and in that season what I think is very important to do 
is you've evaluated this person, you know what they're about, um, and you know truly who they are. But I know for me, whenever I was wondering, okay, is, is he really the one? I had you to never look... wondered that. You knew that. <laughs> right, okay. right. But I had to really step back and think, okay, is this someone that, apart from me being emotionally attached to them, um, would I think so highly of them? Like, would I even um, just regard them as an amazing individual? Would yeah. I, you know, want them to be my family? Would I want them to be in my life? Aside from anything I'm feeling, because emotions and, and people just even saying like, oh, he's a great guy, yeah. and the butterflies can really kind of thwart our image, and it could be in that engagement season when things get rough, because... Yeah. In engagement season, <laughs> there's a lot of stress. You have to have just that validity that you know that you know that you know that this person is the person that you are choosing yeah. and that you are always going to be content with that choice because you know who they are and yeah. who God created them to be. Yeah, and I want to bring in the kind of spiritual side of it because something that we did do is uh, kind of after the first couple phone calls, I asked Christian, I said, can we... Um, like honestly, I knew I, I knew pretty early that she was going to be my wife, but I knew that there was going to be things and thoughts and all this stuff that would come up against it. And so, what I wanted to do from the very beginning, rather than waiting until you know we're engaged or married, is I wanted to bring God into it. And you know, I, I wanted to begin to start praying um, around our marriage. And so, I asked her if right from the beginning, um, can we? pray every single time we were on the phone. Um, like, can we just pray together? And it wasn't something we like were this. Long distance. Yeah, we were lo doing long distance. And it wasn't just something, you know, that we'd be praying like, oh, I pray that you would bless our family. Like, we didn't make it super like, man, this is, this is like praying when you're married type stuff. We just yeah. prayed that God would um, bring out the right intentions in both of us, that God would um, help keep us pure throughout mm -hmm. this process, that God would be so involved in our conversations that um, even if something did not happen, um, if this did not end up, that God would still make something good from it. And we just brought God into the uh, entirety of the relationship from the get-go. And I think that brought, because there was a lot of things that really came up um, that caused, you know, our engagement season, our dating season to be uh, quite stressful at times. You know, us being so far apart, it was hard. And I just know that through when God was in that process, it honestly made it so that we were able to make it through it. And when we stepped into the fullness of marriage, we kind of walked into marriage and it was like a complete change of seasons. And our relationship was so much powerful or so much stronger because of that, mm -hmm. um, because we had done that well. Um, even though we went from a hard period straight into marriage and it was like you would have never known. And I just watched as God had blessed our marriage in such a way. Before any of this, before dating, courtship, marriage, there is a criticalness in spending time with God and knowing one who you are because you're never going to find the perfect person you're never going to know what you're actually looking for or more who God has paired you with until you know like who you are and you're confident in that you're just intimate with the Lord and um, really yeah. walking in just the surety of who you are so you yeah. know you can be sure when you enter into a relationship yeah don't be so rushed to get into a relationship that you miss out on the gift of singleness like yeah. the bible talks about like marriage is a, is a gift and we so much focus on that but the bible mm -hmm. also talks about the singleness is a gift and so sometimes we are so rushed to get from one gift to the other that we never even fully mm -hmm. experience or fully um, really value uh, one of the gifts and yeah. we just jump right past it. Yeah, because if you have friends that are all getting engaged and you're like, when am I ever going to not be single? I'm going to yeah. be the old cat. Like, um, you begin to look through life through this kind of magnifying glass, if you will, mm -hmm. and you're only seeing a limited view of what you want to see. And there's so much that you're actually missing that God's putting in front of you because you're focusing on what you actually can't control, the timing and everything, instead of welcoming it in and preparing yourself for that season. Yeah. But singleness is a time for devotion. Yep. Dating time. is a time for evaluation. Engage is unification and marriage is mission because yeah. once you are tied with that person You are on a mission to be your best self to serve the Lord just to be committed to them And it's actually a beautiful thing that happens when you do each step well